that Professor K.K. Tripathi is from our local institute. He has been Professor Head. After doing his DM in Nephrology, he is a very good academician, teacher, and speaker. Now, I request Professor Tripathi. Before uh, that, I should say that the topic is not new. It is very old and metabolic syndrome we have been discussing and learning from our early MBBS days and still the same that it can you obesity, diabetes, hypertension and dyslipidemia. And now two entries are new. One is NASH and second is obstructive sleep apnea. In detail, I can say that it's a cluster of all these disorders and the learned speaker who should take what he will request. Please proceed with the lecture. Honorable Professor J.K. Agarwal, our teacher. The first generation of endocrinologists, when he became DM, and he could count on hand hardly five or ten by that time would have passed out from PTI Chandigarh. And the tradition we he started learning endocrinology in those days have a long legacy. And the students spread all over the country and taking the short short light. Right, Professor S. K. Singh you saw, Professor Madhukar Rai. And there is a as I said, the Trinity, the father, the son, and then the Holy Spirit. That what was the Christianity before you were baptized. I'm thankful to Dr. Monica giving me this opportunity. I said I'm not a diabetologist or endocrinologist. I will not be doing justice with this topic. But then she insisted that you are not an internal medicine, so you will know that you will tell me about it. And so they gave me an opportunity to go through and pick up some slides from the internet. Today happened to be a very auspicious day for Purdima. And out of nine Upanishads, one of the Upanishads is Pashno Upanishad. The questions being asked by the students and then teacher answers it and learns it. So, whatever little I know from metabolism is because of our postgraduate students who continue to ask the question. And the first question in Prasno Prishad was asked by Kartyayan from Maharshi Pipla. Unhone prashno pucha, Bhagavant, ये संबोधन है ऋषि के लिए पुतो हवा इदा ये थोड़ी सी वैदिक संस्कृत से जो थोड़ा कठिन है समझना प्रजा प्रजान इदे ये प्रजा आया हम सब के लिए प्रजान आया ब्रह्म के लिए प्रजापति के लिए इस सृष्टि का निर्माण में ये जो जीव है इसकी क्या उपस्थिति this is what has been repeated in very simple Sanskrit in Bhagavad Gita. And thanks, Dr. Jacob Dawn might have been at that time in the Department of Medicine and when it was Division of Endocrinology, when probably the emblem of Endocrine Society of India was being conceived. And if you look at the bottom, Dubaira Endocrine Society ke member bane, dekhe uske niche likha hua hai, ek shabd jo teen baar jiski vyaakya hoti hai. और यह व्याख्या गीता के प्रथम अध्याय में आठवें अध्याय में चौबीस अठारह अध्याय में ये गीतम सर्व गीता शुरू में आया भगवान ने कहा अविनाशी तत्व प्रति एन सर्व गीतम तथा यह जो जीव है इसका विनाश नहीं होता आठवें अध्याय में आया स्थानी गीतानी भूतानी ये न सर्व गीतम तथा जो समस्त भूतों में व्याप्त है और सोलह अठारह अध्याय में अंतिम में भगवान कहते हैं यथा प्रवृत्ति भूत आना जिसमें सारे प्रवृत्तियों सारे भूतों की प्रवृत्ति भूत माने हम लोग 
And we were surprised to know that I was talking to Dr. Mathukar a few minutes before uh, on a different context. The insulin, the insulin-like cell, and the insulin-like protein were already known to the unicellular animal billion, billion years before, at least four billion years before. And the cell knew how to metabolize and how to keep the energy with the carbohydrate, sugar, and the glycolysis pathway. And what evolved? Free fatty acid, ornithin, citrulline, and succinyl acid. It is the free fatty acid which was preserved for many purposes, creating the cell wall, number one, getting the movement, number two, using as the energy for the substrate, number three. And then today, now all you learn the question which was asked before. So I take the philosophical part of Augustine, some historical text, what <coughs> Dr. Monica wanted to talk to me. And this is a major public health problem, and now you have seen the slide before Dr. Wang was talking, because it leads to many problems. And one of the words is plurimetabolic syndrome, insulinoresistant syndrome, this metabolic syndrome. Three, four words have been used in history. Uh, the master of ceremony said that two, three dashak pehle ki baat. But the idea was conceived long back, 250 years ago, Morgagni, column of Morgagni, anatomist, the famous anatomist, thought of it on autopsy to the dead bodies and saw a group of dead bodies who had a hypertension, had a uricemia, hyperuricemia, in the records they had a obstructive sleep apnea. Morgagni was basically anatomist and pathologist. So he, from the anatomy, he took the description and he thought something could happen like this. And then from France, the endocrinologist Antoine Obesity described, in which we have a long brick coda, bade pet wale. Gastroenterologist bade bade pet wale. And the story started right from there. And then we have in 60, the word was coined plurimetabolic syndrome, which is obesity, diabetes, lipid disorders with lipid risk of the CHD. In 1980, on word, syndrome X. And then Prof. Jacob used to talk to us about the even famous person. By this time, he came into assistance. It was 1998, WHO coined this definition from the European Group Study of Insulin Resistance and then NCP definition, and then we have in 2005 and 6 the idea of definition of metabolic syndrome. So we'll talk about the obesity, dyslipidemia, hypertension, com various component, hyperglycemia, and the rise in waistline. And there have been several studies which have shown that all have characteristic are exposed to high cardiovascular abnormalities. This is what off is lymph node, famous pathologist. And he said that epidemics appear and often disappear without traces. As some of uh, heard about the smallpox doesn't exist now. With a new culture period has started with like leprosy in English fat. And the history of epidemics is therefore the history of disturbances of human culture. And Dr. Mutkar was talking to culture which is now associated with upcoming growing society so fast. So we'll talk about the health transition, various theories behind the global obesity, diversity, and ultimately what we are going to learn out of this. But we all are optimistic. We should be optimistic. And we have survived for a billion of years, and we have been evolving through. Our system has been evolving, our hormones have been evolving. Dr. Mathur was talking of the, uh, about the methylation of the DNA, and the, it's not all the time the gene, but it is probably the microRNA and DNA which ultimately gets affected, and we get new protein, new protein uh, as a part of. This is what is happening, the transition, which is called demographic transition. Initially, we had a very high death rate, and then we had a very high birth rate. So there was, we were somewhere here. But today, because of the birth rate has been brought down, the death rate has been brought down, we tend to survive longer. So we have 
being able to take all onslaught and in spite of all this problem we have continued to survive. If you look the 1990, the transition phase when we have a communicable disease which was very high, malaria, typhoid, lot of viral fever, enterflitis, and that was very high that's it. Then we had a very limited at that time those patients who had a non-communicable disease. Injuries contributed and then now gradually the communicable disease came much lesser and the non-communicable have taken over the highest loft of the death. But surprisingly, if you look at the pathogenous and therefore those people who have lived, in spite of 65 plus age group, they have been continued to very high prevalence of that. And therefore, it has something to do with the other fact. What is generational transmission of diabetes? And we have experimental evidences, low birth weight, with weight gain in adulthood, with increases the CVD, and diabetes comes later, followed with cancer. And we've seen our system was not meant for. Our DNA, our enzyme system were not meant for such affluence life. And suddenly we got the affluence, and there have been instances where the people have migrated to Saudi Arabia for some reason, labor, when they come back, they come with a very high incidence of obesity and diabetes. Maternal obesity amplifies the risk of diabetes in pregnancy, birth defects. And now because of IVF, the 